Welcome back, friends, to the shop. I got a request from one of my subscribers a couple weeks ago uh, if I could show how to repair uh, down jackets. Do you guys wear down jackets, or is this only Pacific Northwest thing? This is like everyone wears these here. It's like it's the ubiquitous uniform. I think because they're very warm uh, and they're very light. Uh, I don't like to have a coat that's really restrictive, but they're also very vulnerable, especially to be around campfires or burns or anything. They snag really easy. So I'm going to show you a way that you can repair these that no one will ever hardly notice and that will last through washing machine. I've got one that I've repaired that I counted back. 15 years ago, and it still is perfect. So it's a simple process. You can use this to uh, repair anything nylon, sleeping bag, tent, whatever. Very simple, very easy, uh, and you can color match. So let me show you what to do. The jacket we'll be fixing today is just a, just a basic Patagonia down jacket. Okay, every time I have, every time I wear Patagonia, Patagonia excuse me, uh, man, the hate comes out in the comments. Do you know how anti-American that company is? Well, you know what? I mean, good grief. The very computer you're typing on, uh, it's probably made in a Chinese sweatshop. And you want to know China's record on human rights? Look into organ, organ harvesting. And, and so before you start throwing stones, look to your own problem. Look into your own things, right? I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. You buy whatever you want to buy. I, I, their stuff lasts. I like it. Um, and it's super high quality. Uh, so I've actually, this coat's probably been repaired here, I think. Let me show you. So can you see the repair? If you look closely. It's pretty hard to see, right? Uh, it's right. It's right there, uh, right there. Typically on these, I'm, uh, you know, I'm moving my arms around. They'll get snagged on things, and and then of course you lose all your feathers, right? Kind of the interesting thing. You see how these are quilted? The old. I've had old back in the day some cheap down uh, I, items where they would like just do a stitch across the top, and then you, all the feathers would like from gravity would like pile up in the bottom. The reason why they quilt these like this, of course, is to keep the feathers in their little areas, right? So you don't lose too many. If you get a hole in one, yeah, you're going to evacuate the feathers out of this little bit right here, but it's not going to ruin the whole jacket. So it's important to catch these in time uh, so you don't lose all your lose all your feathers. But we can see right here, we've got a little a cut right there, uh, and we've got a little cut right there that we need to fix. So I'll show you uh, what we're going to use to do that. For the best results, you're going to want to use get this special tape. This particular brand, and don't get hung up around the brand. I, a lot of companies make it. I've been using this basic, this same stuff. I used to get it at Bimart under, I don't know, it doesn't make it. This is tenacious tape, uh, and it seems to be really good. I've used this on a couple jackets. Uh, it's just got an adhesive, really high quality adhesive backing. You're going to want to sock it. I usually, for these small holes, I'll use a 7 8 or 15 16 as a template. Sharpie, pencil, whatever you have. The silver Sharpies are nice because they match, or because they show up in the color. Um, a small pin to poke the feathers back in, um, and trauma shears. Trauma shears are, uh, man, you can get these things for like 3 or $4. They cut everything. You could cut a penny in half with these, believe it or not. I keep them right by my shop above like where the WD-40 is on a hook because you grab these things and use them all the time. They're the best for opening those blister packs. But the cool thing about this tape uh, is you can get it all different colors. So if you melt your sleeping bag or anything like that, you can usually get something that will match up and be close. And pro tip here, a lot of people, once they get a small hole or a little burn in this, they'll take these, these jackets, which are expensive, to the thrift store. You can almost always find them with a little burn or something. Just buy them for a little bit of nothing and and um, who cares if it's got a little patch on there? In, in my experience, you know, I wash, you know, things thro get thrown in the wash machine all the time, and they, um, I've never had the tape come off. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, take your socket, whatever size you want. Don't put a square patch on, because what a square patch gives you is it gives you an exposed little corner, um, and that one tends to want to peel off, uh, and it's, uh, it always comes off if you try to do square. So just take a moment, and I'll just take a socket, here, or just anything you have that's round and trace around it uh, with the silver. And this will give me, a, give me my pattern there. Now, if you use the silver, if you want, you can use black. You can see it just as well. I just, my eyes are not as good as they used to be, so I, I've kind of went to using the silver. So what I'll do is I'll just cut that square out closely, staying outside the lines, and, and then we'll just trace that around, right? Now I'll cut to the inside of it so I don't have the sharpie, the silver sharpie on there. You definitely want to round the round patch. I love trauma shears. They're just 
for as cheap as they are, they just work so well. Okay, once we get that, now we can set up our jacket here. Boy, the more I look at this, the more holes I see. So what I typically do here is uh, make sure that this is clean. Just take a paper towel. I had Mrs. W wash this here. I probably should have patched it first. And I'll just stuff those guys back in there. Those little feathers, I'm sticking out. Just clean it up the best you can. And I have not, don't be afraid to put that tape right over top of a seam. Um, I used to worry about that sometimes and I wonder if that was gonna work, but it, it wouldn't. And when you're, whenever you're using the, this adhesive stuff, there is so much oil on your hands, you'd be surprised. Those of you guys who do photography or video work or wear glasses and realize that, you wanna try not to touch it if possible. Same way with the Band-Aid. As soon as you touch a Band-Aid, that's where it comes unstuck. And so I'll just, I'll use this. Usually what I'll try to do is I'll just use this little ice pick deal um, to fold that back without touching it. There's no iron on or anything here. It's just a, yeah. This is tenacious tape here. But if you can fold that back there like that, now you've got your little exposed deal. And I didn't do a very good job. It looks like it's stuck to itself. There we go. Uh, so what I'll do is just, you know, just kind of size that, estimate the center, and then apply that part without the tape. Now you can put some pressure on that and pull that off. It really is important not to touch that, that backing. Pull it tight with your fingers, and now press this guy on here really hard. Yeah, I know it's not. It's not rocket science here, but if you do it right, it will last a long time. And they, they've got now, they used to only have a couple colors. You could get like red or blue. But now they have all those colors. Uh, and there's your patch right there. Should we do another one? Let's do another one just because it's so much fun here. Speaking of fire and sleeping bags, you guys keep telling me they want to hear the funny hunting stories. I got a, I got a hunting story where I almost caught on fire in a sleeping bag. <laughs> My granddad and I, so of course, you know, he was a working guy, I've told you this before, he worked as a mechanic shop. He worked in a mechanic shop for Ford and he was a transmission guy when he retired. Uh, only job he ever quit, he got out of the war and he went to work for a Ford dealership and he had a year in advance had put it, told his boss, I, I want you to know I'm, I'm taking my two weeks vacation, I'm going elk hunting. That was how he took, as, how he took his vacations. Uh, okay, so they wrote him down right there. And then, of course, granddad, you know, is a model employee, type of guy you don't, type of guy you could dream of having. You know, you want to take care of guys like that. And so uh, it came up about a, a week or so before elk hunting. And uh, no, it was a couple days. That's what it was. I think it was maybe even the day before. And he uh, went up to his boss and said, oh, just to remind you, you know, I'll be taken off for two weeks and um, going elk hunting. You know, I put in for that last year. And his boss said, oh, no, Chet, sorry, we're too busy. I can't let you take two weeks off. Granddad turned around and he walked over to his workstation there and he locked up his toolbox and backed his car up. The old, I don't remember what he's driving, it was a Galaxy 500 or maybe it was, I forget. He uh, backed up his, uh, opened the trunk and uh, packed his toolbox out and, uh, and quit and went elk hunting. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that was it. And uh, when he got back, he uh, went out to he worked uh, out at McRobert Ford in Gresham, Oregon. Uh, he when he got back from elk hunting, he went and of course he had a job the next day, right? He's he's a quality guy. Uh, like uh, Granddad was a man of few words, but he didn't put up with any nonsense, and he wasn't going to have it. No one's going to tell him he wasn't going to go elk hunting. And uh, that was funny. But to my, my personal story. So anyway, so we would go over, uh, the point I was getting to is, I don't, I'm not even going to get to my story, was that um, he would leave to go elk hunting like on a, a Friday after work, and it was an eight-hour drive or 10-hour drive. Now, they would head east uh, across 84, and that was before there was an interstate there. And so that old road was, that was slow going. So they would drive, him and his brother, they'd drive all night, uh, to, and it's just in the morning, you know, you can start hunting at, at um, uh, when the sun starts coming up at uh, dusk, uh, they were just rolling in after driving all night. Then they'd hunt all day, 
And, you know, because they didn't have time off, you know, they were, they, they couldn't afford it. Uh, they had to get back to work on Monday and they would hunt Saturday and they'd hunt Sunday. And then um, they would drive all night Sunday after that and uh, back to work on Monday. And so he would, uh, they would get tired sometimes and they'd need to rest. And so he would pull over the side of the road and we used to do this too. We did it twice. And he had those old green army tents. I still remember the smell of them. And he would take one of those tents and he would just throw it on the ground like about a 12 by 12 or 10 by 10 or so. We'd throw it on the ground and we would uh, make, basically make it like a taco. And we would uh, throw our sleeping bags in there and, uh, and then throw that tarp over top of us. One time we had done that and we woke up in the morning, we had a foot of snow on us. <laughs> just a couple hours of rest and then keep going, you know, because it's uncomfortable to sleep in a car. Um, well, and I'll never forget that. He was, it was just... Uh, Guys were just tougher back then. You just didn't think anything of it. You just did those sort of things. And uh, you know, now, of course, oh, don't have a hotel and don't have a shower and can't watch the Food Network or in the hotel. You know, it's different, different deal. All right, there we go. We got our patches on there. You, if I, you can't hardly see it. You really won't hardly see it from a distance. Um, I mean, you're pretty close up here, but that's how you fix it. You can just, I'll, I'll put a link to these guys, uh, this Tenacious Tape, I've had really good luck with it. This is the second roll I've used. Uh, just get different colors and you can match and uh, there you go. If you wanted to, you could even cut these into animal shapes, right? Put your own personal stamp on that because a stitch in time saves nine. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. We'll, uh, don't forget to like and, uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next video.